Hello ladies, gentlemen, and persons in between. My name is Tim Snowborn, and today we're going to continue my reaction to the Walk Away movement on another episode of Serious Issues. So last time I gave you my initial reaction to the video, we kind of watched it together and I commented on it here and there. Today I'd like to go deeper into my thoughts on the video as a whole. Let's take a look at what kind of issues caused liberals to become so brutish and nasty. Have any conservatives been chased out of a restaurant due to their views on tax policy? No. Have any conservatives ever been assaulted for their views on campaign finance reform? Uh-uh. Have any conservatives ever canceled a speaking engagement at a university because of protesters outside decrying their position on health care? No, I don't think that's happened. Here's what gets liberals riled up. Racism, sexism, homophobia, and xenophobia. Understand that the vast majority of the contempt by the left toward the right is a response to discrimination by the right. We believe that everyone should be treated equally and fairly, and when we see people not being treated equally and fairly, that tends to get under our skin. We believe that if you can't be nice to someone, leave them alone. If you can't leave them alone, we're going to have problems. If you have a problem with gay people, leave them alone. If you have a problem with non-whites, leave them alone. If you have a problem with women, leave them alone. If you have a problem with religious minorities, leave them alone. If those on the right would learn to leave people in these marginalized groups alone, we would get along fine, we wouldn't have a problem. But you don't get to assault and murder racial minorities and enact legislation to discriminate against the LGBT community and then act like you're the victim when we defend ourselves against you. You hit me, I hit you back. You hit my friend, I hit you back. The whole reason I was inspired to make this video was because I know that right-wing spin doctors like Straka are very good at crafting narratives that make them look like the victim and us look like the bullies. You don't get to sit there and act like you didn't throw the first punch. You don't get to act like you were just innocently expressing an alternate point of view and you did nothing to deserve this. If you want to have a conversation about tax policy or trade or healthcare or education reform or campaign finance reform, let's do that. But there are some things that are just plain off the table. And those things involve treating other groups of people like second-class citizens. I'm content to agree to disagree and let you have your opinion when your opinion is something like tax cuts create jobs. We can agree to disagree on that. But when your opinion is something like border crossers deserve whatever punishment the Border Patrol gives them, or healthcare providers should be allowed to deny treatment to LGBT members based on their religion, then I'm inclined to do a little more than just disagree with you. The Trump administration is now arguing that healthcare providers should be allowed to refuse care to LGBT members based on their religious convictions. So again, it kind of puzzles me how a gay man like Straka could support the GOP. There's no contradiction between being gay or a racial minority or a woman or a religious minority and believing in low taxes on the wealthy and small government. What puzzles me is why any of them would be Republicans, given how Republicans have and still do treat people in those groups. It doesn't surprise me that some African Americans are conservative, but I don't know why they would join the GOP when every time a black person is murdered by the police, white people on the right just make excuses as to why the guy probably deserved it. It doesn't surprise me that some LGBT are conservative, but I don't know why they would be Republicans when Republicans have fought against marriage equality and for the right to discriminate against LGBT members in the workplace and in housing. It was liberals who gave LGBT the right to marry. It was liberals who gave LGBT members the right to serve openly in the military. Yes, I know Bill Clinton signed Don't Ask, Don't Tell, but at that time, Don't Ask, Don't Tell was a progressive step. Before then, you could ask if a person was gay or lesbian, and if they said yes, they could not serve. It doesn't surprise me that many Hispanics and Latinos are conservative. It does surprise me that they would want to be members of the GOP, given how the GOP treats incoming undocumented workers and separates children from their families at the border. Right now, Donald Trump is the leader of the GOP, and his administration is instituting policies to kick immigrants out, even if they've served in our military. People who put on the uniform and served our country, even though it wasn't their country at the time. They're kicking veterans out. They're also removing protections for transgendered troops and students. 
and we're supposed to believe that the right is more tolerant and accepting? Again, the people on the right who are being chased out of restaurants and shouted down and booed off stage are not innocently expressing an alternate point of view. They are expressing discrimination against groups of people who do not deserve it. If your policies and your rhetoric encourage people to treat others as second-class citizens and discriminate against them, I'm not going to apologize for fighting back against you. By the way, this whole walk away business, that door swings both ways. You'd be surprised how many conservatives have left the GOP since Donald Trump won the nomination. Steve Schmidt, George Will, Bill Kristol, the Koch brothers are walking away. The Koch brothers, the George Soros and Warren Buffett of the right are walking away because they hate Donald Trump and what he has turned the GOP into. There's an entire Twitter account dedicated to retweeting tweets from people who cannot believe that they voted for Donald Trump. There are many on the right who are embarrassed by what the GOP has become under Donald Trump. If you too are embarrassed by what the GOP has become, perhaps it's time for you to walk away. Oh, and in case you missed it, it turns out most of these walk away ads are fake. They're made using stock images and fake quotes. And the walk away hashtag is the third most commonly used hashtag by Russian propaganda bots online. So yeah, as I said, you don't get to sit there and act like you didn't throw the first punch. You did throw the first punch. These marginalized groups didn't pick a fight with you, you picked a fight with them. They were more or less minding their own business when you came along and started treating them like garbage, so you don't get to act surprised when they fight back. Alright, that's enough of that. Uh, I'm sure I don't have to tell you to leave your thoughts in the comments below, I look forward to reading those. If this is your first time on my channel, welcome, it's great to have you here. I hope that you will subscribe and join me for future conversations and check out my previous videos for more. If you're a current subscriber, welcome back. It's lovely to have you tuning in again. I really appreciate your continued support. Thank you very much. Until next time, take care, everyone.